guys, this is Jeremy from 5-Minute Radiography. I wanted to make a quick video in correlation with the last podcast episode I put out uh, to better understand histograms and how it's possible to shoot the same technical factors on the same anatomy and get two completely different exposure indicator numbers. So for this, we're going to go to the screen and take a look into Photoshop. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple radiographs here. We have a broken clavicle. Uh, this first radiograph, you can see up in the corner here, was taken at 72 kVp, 10.24 mass. The EI is 579. Uh, the EIT here means EI target, so the target range is 300. So we're almost double the exposure value that we are looking for here. Uh, we go to image 2. Same technical factors, 72 kV, 10.4 mass, but that says 287 for the EI. So the same technical factors, just like in our podcast we were talking about, produced a different exposure indicator. Although this uh, particular one, the first one started out as overexposed with 579. The second one turned out right around target range, just slightly underexposed. So how do we get this? If you look um, at the, I guess the overall picture here, look at how much overall darkness is here. That's area of the radiograph that's outside the anatomy of interest. So we're off center, we're a little bit high. Here's where the center of that radiograph was. So outside of the anatomy um, of interest, but included within the collimated field. That's how the same technique, remember we were talking about the histogram is gonna have a higher average dark value. Here in Photoshop, we can look at a histogram here. I should point out one main difference between photographs, uh, as in this particular image here in Photoshop. The histogram that comes up for Photoshop is different than that of the histograms that we see in radiography. Uh, for the main reason being this high peak right here on the left, this represents the dark pixels. And then as you go right on the histogram, that represents the, the white areas. So this little spike right here is probably the white area surrounding here outside of the collimated field that's absolutely white and occurring within our exposure field here. This is a very large peak, uh, pretty wide here for dark pixels. And you're looking at the, um, the median value of 72 here. So for this particular Photoshop system, the lower that number, the darker the average value. Now if you go to the second image here, the histogram is shifted a little to the left. I'm gonna toggle back and forth between them. See the difference there? This one's a little more to the left, but the average value is 91, which is gonna be closer to the right here. Same technical factors were used. The average value is lighter because you're centered appropriately. The central ray goes right through the clavicle on this image, and you can tell this is the axial shot just because of the shape of the collimated field being angled there at the periphery. But if, if we had probably done the same technical factors on the first image and centered a little bit higher, we probably would have gotten an EI that was closer to 300, just like we did here. Now keep in mind, if, if let's say there's a 10 degree angle cephalic on this, that might influence your SID by half an inch or so, but, but really not that much. So you're, you're really kind of maintaining consistency with SID. We know the technical factors are consistent. The only difference is the collimated field. So in order to fix this, we need to make sure we're centering appropriately each and every time, maintain consistency, like I said in the podcast, and you're gonna be able to more accurately predict the exposure indicator that you're shooting for based off the technical factors that you know work. Well guys, I hope this video has been a little bit helpful to understand how you can kind of run into that error. Um, I'm going to be having some more videos coming out soon. If there's any topics that you'd like me to address, please feel free to shoot me a message. But I'm hoping to put out some more podcast episodes and YouTube videos that are going to kind of dive into uh, the specifics about digital imaging, image critique, and lots of other radiography-based tutorials. So thanks for watching. Hit subscribe down below if you haven't already. And check out my website, 5minuteradiography.com, for more information. Have a good day.